I bow to all the seekers of truth. The other day I told you a little bit about the first center called as Muladhar Chakra and Kundalini, which is the residual consciousness in the triangular bone called as Sacrum. <coughs> as I told you that this is the pure desire power, pure desire power which has not yet been awakened and is not yet manifested within you, which is sat here waiting for a moment to arise and to give you your second birth, your baptism, it makes you a peak, it gives you your Self-realization. This pure desire is to be one with your Spirit. This, unless and until it is fulfilled, those who are seeking will never be satisfied, whatever may, they may do. <coughs> now this first center is very important because this was the first center that was created when the primordial being started doing the job. This is the center of innocence, that is holiness. First thing that was created was holiness on this earth. This center is very important in all the human beings because animals have innocence, they have not lost it, while we have a right or we can say we have a freedom to abandon it. We can do it. We, we can somehow or other destroy it by our so-called ideas of freedom. <coughs> now this center has a power to give us wisdom. Now wisdom is such a, such a word that cannot be explained. Wisdom is the balance between your understanding of what is good and what is bad, where you really understand what is good for you, for your spirit is wisdom. And when this center is alive and is not destroyed, then you really know what is wisdom is. For example, the <coughs> person who has got this center very well developed can tell you whether it is the north or the south. Because the magnetism that is in the Mother Earth, this center is made by the element of Mother Earth. So the magnetism that is in the Mother Earth is <coughs> there, present in this center. When the birds fly all the way from Siberia to Australia, they do it with the help of this center because they know whether they are moving northward or southward. They have an innate wisdom to know which way to move. And that's why one should know that this center is also within us, but we have lost our sense of judgment because we have lost that magnetism within us. <coughs> An innocent person is really like a magnet and it attracts, he attracts the people towards himself just like a flower attracts a bee towards itself. <coughs> there are some fishes in which they have found actual magnetic uh, field and in some of them they have even found a regular magnet placed in certain fishes by which they know whether they are going north, south, east or west. This center in us can be destroyed by various ways as I told you last time. Now if you see on, from the top there is a blue line coming down, this is the power of our desire, <coughs> by which we desire is the emotional side of a human being. When a person neglects his emotional side or does not respect his emotional side, then this center gets lost. It gets very much destroyed. The emotional side in these modern times is not well understood by human beings. <coughs> I'm sorry to say, but it is very true that when you destroy this center, 
first thing that sets in is impotency or overactivity like the rapist and all that are created because this center is negated. Both things are just the same in the eyes of God. Any extreme is wrong. Now those people who say that you can be enlightened through sex are really, I don't know what to call them, because she is your mother sitting down there. She is only your mother. She has no other child and she is holiest of holy. She is the Holy Ghost within you. And if you want to sex on your mother, I mean, I don't know if people understand that here. In India it's impossible, we cannot understand this nonsense. So it's the same insult to your mother, like some people try to insult Mother Mary by putting Christ in a very awkward situation with her. It's something like that, we can say, happens when you start talking like that. It's a very great sin to do such a thing to your own mother, which is the Kundalini. And that's why the other day I told you, I have seen some people have Kundalini, which is all the time tossing her head and breaking her whole body and just feeling so helpless because she's made so weak, because the holiness from a person is vanished. Our idea of holiness has become so perverted, so perverted, and to add up to that, we have now gurus to tell us that it's a very good thing to do, you'll go to heaven. Actually, they are very honest, they say you'll go to bottomless pit, and bottomless pit means hell. Why do you need a guru for this? Actually, you have mastered the science. I mean, in England when I went, I was amazed that they have sex about, I mean, they talk of sex and sex and sex, morning till evening, I don't understand. Like all important people talk, you see, that's how they go on talking about sex all the time. It's nothing but sex, it's so filthy, so filthy. They talk sex with the animals, sex with the children, sex with the, I don't know what's happening to human beings. How can we be that filthy? I wouldn't be surprised after some time we will have our bathrooms inside our drawing rooms. You see, there's something like our privacy, something like our drawing room where we meet people. How can you talk of these things and how can you discuss these things which are so private and so sacred? And that's how you lose them or you lose balance over them. This is one of the things that's happening to us because we, God has given us freedom, we think we can do what we like. But we have lost our wisdom. We have lost, I don't know why this industrial revolution or I don't know whom to blame, but we have lost our wisdom to understand that these things are injurious. If it is not, we logically we can say, why do we develop diseases? With free sex, all the sailors, you know, under law, have to have in every port arrangements for getting injections for all kinds of complications that they have from sex life. Why is it you do not feel healthier with it? You lose all your health, all your charm is gone from your face, you are sunken and you look so horrid is a very good sign just now to see how nature reacts to it. So one has to be wise to understand that God has given us this thing to us, not to be insulted, but for us to lead a good, normal, good married life and not to waste our energies in this kind of thing. But when people start thinking about it, then it's even worse. Then what happens that this shifts from there the attention onto the other side and it goes to the yellow side, goes to the brain. When you start thinking about it, definite it is that you will become important. Definite, no doubt, at a very early stage because it is a spontaneous thing. And when you start thinking about it, when your eyes start roving here and there, be sure your attention is gone to something which is so localized, which is so different and which takes place only at a time when you are at a certain emotional spontaneity. <coughs> it's very out of date to talk of these things to people, but if you are not careful about it, you have to find out the statistics of American young people and you'll be amazed how many of them are suffering from horrible diseases. When I went to America, I found that Nine out of ten young people who came to me were suffering from these horrible diseases and most of them were impotent. It's a shocking thing. 
One has to face it as it is and not to say, oh, I, I'm all right, I'm all right. This is not the way to look at things. We have to see to the statistics that are being placed before us and to know that there is something wrong about it. And with your wisdom, you have to reach certain conclusions about it. <coughs> now, the second center, which I call as the Swadhisthana center, is also a very important center within us. The first center looks after all our excretion. It has got four petals in the same way in the pelvic plexus, which is manifested by that, which is a gross plexus within us, has also got four subplexuses. Now, the another one that we have is the Swadhisthana center, which is the second center. Second center has got six petals <coughs> and it supplies or it manifests in the gross, the aortic plexus, which also has got six sub subplexuses. Now, this center is very important for us in the modern times. It's extremely important and I think neglect of this center can create lots of problems. Now, this center, if you see, is connected with the brain. And this center is responsible for our action, is the center of our creativity. When we think of the future, when we do any physical work, we use this center for that purpose. And one has to understand that these days we are developing lots of diseases because we have not understood what is the function of this center is. <coughs> the foremost center, foremost function of this center is to convert the fat cells for the use of the gray matter in the head. When we think too much, all the time about the future we plan, we go on planning into all details, what happens is that this poor center has to work very hard to produce new cells one after another for the use of your brain. Apart from that, it has to do many other functions. It has to look after your liver, it has to look after your spleen, it has to look, look after your pancreas, your kidneys and also uterus among women. If you start thinking too much, all the time thinking, if you cannot stop your thinking, all the time your brain goes on thinking, a sort of a thinking process starts without your control, then poor this center has to work all that, your liver, liver goes out. When your liver goes out, you must know that liver is one of the most important things within us because it nourishes our attention, chitta. It nourishes our chitta. Now, this attention, whenever it is spoiled, it is spoiled because there are certain poisons within us. Any, it can be physical poisons, it can be mental poisons, it can be emotional poisons, any kind of poisons there are, especially the physical and the emotional ones, they go to this liver which sorts it out. <coughs> this, is the, this is the function of this liver is to sort it out. But when you are not giving it sufficient energy, you are using it for thinking, then poor this center is left behind. It has no nourishment, nobody looks after it, it becomes sluggish. When it becomes sluggish, all the heat accumulates in the liver. And such a person doesn't get any temperature till he gets cirrhosis and he dies. Now, when thinking goes on too much, people get tired of thinking, thinking too much, thinking too much. So they think, that let's have something that will take us away from thinking, which will give us a kick outside. So they take some sort of a drug or a drink or alcohol and all that. All the saints in the world have said that alcohol is very dangerous for life. The reason is it goes against our awareness. Our awa this is a fact. You know that after taking a drink, our awareness becomes blurred or excited. It's not normal. That is the reason they said no. In Sahaja Yoga, I do not say don't do this or don't do that. I only want you to come to Sahaja Yoga, get your realization and then you will not ask for it. <coughs> That's a much better way to do it. But why they asked you? For example, if you read Moses, Moses has clearly said that these are strong drinks. Very clearly, I don't know if people read that. And they should be avoided. I don't know if the Jews do that. They should not be taken, he's very clearly said it. 
Abraham said the same thing, that drinks are not good. Why all these prophets talk about it? Because they are all born in that green patch of ours. They are all placed in this green patch where we get our sustenance, which is ten. We have got ten sustenances within us, like the gold has a sustenance that it does not tarnish. In the same way, human beings have got ten sustenances. And these ten sustenances are represented by great prophets. The principal is called as Adi Guru in Sanskrit language, the primordial master. He has incarnated on this earth as Abraham, Moses, as Lao Tse, as Confucius, as Socrates. Recently, he has been as Sai Nath of Shirdi, not the other fellow. And other great people have been like Nanaka, Janaka. All these great saints came on this earth to tell us how to keep in the center, how to keep our sustenance, how to be human beings. As carbon has got four valencies, we too have got ten valencies. We have to maintain those ten valencies within us. That's what they came to tell us. But you see, if anybody says now, don't, you don't drink, half of the hall will be empty. If you say you cannot have free sex, five people will walk off. That's the problem. Here no, nobody likes to know anything about it, but it's a dangerous thing to do. Whatever it is that you have to keep in the center. You have to be in the center and how to keep in the center is not to go to extreme, be moderate and moderate life is the best way. But even if you have not been, doesn't matter. Kundalini is at this point in such a force that whatever you might have done, you get your realization quite all right. So it's a different point, but what I'm trying to tell you is this, that why these people said so, why they said, now Muhammad Sahib is another one who said don't drink, he's one of them, he's just the same, there's no difference, there's no difference between Moses and Muhammad Sahib. I can prove it to you on vibrations, you can yourself know through vibrations that they were the same people, said the same thing, there's no difference of any kind, it's only people are fighting, I don't know why, I just can't understand what is there to fight between these two. They were just the same, preached the same thing and the, when Moses crossed the river and the bridge was made, that bridge is the bridge which is symbolic of the Kundalini that creates for you to cross this void within us. It's very symbolic. They have worked so hard to tell you what is sustainance, where we have to be in the center. Because if you are in the sustenance, as we said, that only a thread uh, of this Kundalini rises. It is not one thread that should rise. Actually, I've seen in people, the whole of it goes up like that and stays there in many people. But the trouble is, it rises because there's no space to rise. We have finished off with the Swadishthana and with the another chakra which is in the center, which is the, the color is wrong. All right. <laughs> uh, in the center, the that is the, called as Nabhi Chakra, means a navel center. So when you have an obstruction in the center, naturally the Kundalini, though it rises with full force, all the things, all the threads fall down and only one somehow or other goes up and opens up the Sahasrara, thinking that at least if I open up there, then the others, the grace will fall and maybe it will open out more. So. This is the problem. That's why they said that you lead a life which is moderate and temperate. And this is what they preach to you. Now let us see what happens when we go to extremes. <coughs> In the center, as you have seen, is the sustenance within us. Now if you try to go beyond this side or that side, what happens? Let us see. Beyond this side is the subconscious. If you go, you enter into the collective subconscious. On the other side, if you move, that is the supraconscious, you enter into collective supraconscious. Now into this side are all the people, on the left side are the people who are still dissatisfied, very sly, sinister, horrible people who are dead, who do not want to take birth and who still want to torture people are still existing there. These are busybodies. They can possess you, they do possess. And on the right-hand side, there are people like Hitler, who are very ambitious, 
who have died out of their ambitions and things like that, they still exist. Either you enter into this side or either you enter into that side when you go to extremes and you just get possessed. It's a very dangerous area we are entering into. Recently I was seeing a BBC program and some doctors had discovered a very interesting thing. They said that cancer is triggered, listen to this very clear, carefully, cancer is triggered by some proteins, they call it protein 58, protein 56 or something like that. When these proteins attack us from some unknown areas within us, which are built within us since our creation. What are these areas? I mean, this I have been telling for so many years, is the left side and the right side, the two extremes. Now what do we do when we go to the right side? <coughs> right side is the area where you think too much, where you project yourself in the future. Now like that you go on, then you start becoming a person who is more interested in the future than in the present. The center is the present. Now you start projecting your mind into that. When you start projecting your mind too much into that, you start moving into that side. With that, anybody who is an austere person, they think that if you are a very austere person, you lead a life of celibacy and all these nonsensical things, you see. All this is absolutely nonsensical. If you lead a life of celibacy, it's not going to help you at all. On the contrary, such a person becomes an extremely dark, dry person and ultimately dies of heart attack. And such a person is so hard-headed, <laughs> so hot-tempered that you must take a barge pole before you meet such a person. <laughs> they are so cursing type, I mean so unaware of other people's health or anything that they can curse anyone. And this is their job, is to curse this one and curse that one and curse that one. They're extremely dry people. They might take to social work in the name of God. Oh, they'll work like hell for the poor. They're thinking they're saving the poor and doing this and that. And while if you see them any other time, you'll be sure that such a person is absolutely burning with fire. They have a horrible liver very hot temper, there's no sweetness about them, there's no magnetism about them. All the people run away from them, they're like boy scouts, you see, sitting on everybody's head. Do this, do that, you haven't done this, what are you doing? They will not sleep themselves and not allow anybody to sleep. They will, they think that everybody is supposed to work under their thumb and these are the people who are very ego-oriented as shown there are the people who move on to the right-hand side. Any austere ideas about religion can take you to this side. And this austerity is very dangerous for human beings because it cuts you off from the whole. Such a person may be entrapped or possessed by some sort of a personality on the right-hand side. I know of a lady who is very well known in India and who has got a big prize and a this and that for her social work. I happened to see her first time on a, an aeroplane when she had no prizes and all that. She came with some sort of an odd stuff with her and she wanted to sit in the front seat. So the air hostess said, I'm sorry, this is reserved for some children who are sick and they have to go by this plane and we can't give you this and the mother is there. She started fighting with the mother, how many sick have you cured? What do you think of yourself and this and that? And she was just jumping from here to there and there to there and there to there and she wouldn't allow the plane to leave. And for half an hour she was fighting to sit down there. And the amount of abuses she used for the air hostess, I was amazed. And she's supposed to be a woman who should be given a peace prize or something like that. I don't know, there was no peace on her face, neither around her, and everybody was so disturbed with the way she was on about it. It was really shocking to see this personality who was so hot-tempered and so meticulous about things. And she was arguing with her, this was my seat and this was this and this was that. Thank God, then they got her out and the plane left the place. But I'm telling you, such people can be so frantically hot-tempered and can be so unaware 
of your presence there that you have to be very, very careful with them. Such people may look to be very, very successful in life, you see, and when they walk they have an upper lip and all sorts of things, you see. But it takes no time for them to realize that it's all tomfoolery going on. This kind of ego orientation can lead you to nothing but stupidity. A person can be extremely stupid and he doesn't know he has been how stupid he has been because he says, what's wrong? You see, a gentleman came to see us and he had a wife, she was only sixteen years of age and the fellow was eighteen year, eighty years of age, you see. Naturally, I felt he must be the grandfather, you see. So I said, is she your grandmother, gran granddaughter? So my husband pinched me, he said, that's his wife. I said, really? I said, I'm sorry, I didn't know she was a... What's wrong? I can have a, wi a wife who is two year old. Uh, what's wrong in it? I said, nothing wrong. Only thing people will laugh at you. That's all. All sorts of stupid things people do in this world and they think, what's wrong? This is the best way to get along with your stupidity till they discover <laughs> that you are the greatest stupid person going up. Now this stupidity comes from this ego going up and surrounding your brain completely. You cannot see anything else, you just see yourself, my room, my house, my, 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 my. You cannot see that there are others, that you, you owe some sort of a relationship to others, that you have to be kind to them, that you have to share things with them. You all the time think about yourself and such people get possessed by supraconscious style. What happens in spirituality with such people? They start feeling their body is lying here and they go up and sit on a tree. They think it is realization or enlightenment, just imagine. This is nothing but a supraconscious uh, spirit has <laughs> entered and taken the body away and put it there. I had, <coughs> I told you three Americans coming from America and they were known to be very big scientists. They came to see me very, and they said, Mother, you have to teach us one thing. I said, what? We want to fly. I said, fly? You are already flying. What do you want to fly? They said, no, but we want to fly with ESP. I said, you should not do that because if you do that, then you are enslaved by these spirits and you do want to do that, to be enslaved by these spirits? Yes, whatever it is, enslavement or anything, we want to have this and we want to get this by which we fly. I said, why? They said, because Russia is doing it and Russians are doing uh, experiments with ESP, so we should also do. I said, if they are going to hell, are you also going to go to hell? They said, yes. What's wrong? I said, nothing wrong. Go with two running jumps, you can go very fast there. But as far as I am concerned, I am not for it. I am not going to doom your life forever. So then he, <laughs> they asked me, uh, I said, I asked him, who has sent you to me? So they said, one Patanjali, you see, there is a fellow called Patanjali who is a journalist. I said, this Patanjali has sent you? Yes, he has sent us to, to you. He was the man who used to leave his body and run all over the places. He was a journalist, you see, so he used to get the news before uh, anybody knew. <laughs> and he used to run out of his house and the wife was so surprised that one day he brought some sand and he said, yesterday, you know where I was? I was on the Juhu beach, from there I bought the sand for you. She got such a fright and he w used to shake before any photograph of God or Christ or anyone, he used to shake like that. So she brought to me, she said, this fellow is shaking, I don't know what's happening, he's rattling, is it Parkinson's thing, I don't know what's happening and here he in the night he disappears, I lock up everything, still he disappears, I don't know what to do and it's very shocking. He said, sometimes I go and sit on a tree, I said, really? So <coughs> I told him that you are possessed, he said, mother, please take away. I don't want this nonsense, you don't know where I will end up. Tomorrow I'll be anywhere hanging in the air, I don't want to do that. And maybe that my body may not come back. And this is what people are doing now, is to take out the spirits. When they take out the spirit from a person, you see, they keep it with them. Like the children, the small children die in their sleep. If, you, if my mother is here and she has a child in America, she says, I want to talk to my child through a medium. It's a very dangerous thing. Never play with these mediums, very dangerous. And such a mother, I know in Switzerland, she did that to a child and the child died in America in her sleep because the dist distance is such that where there is day, there is night. And she was doing this in the daytime and the child was sleeping. And she talked to the child, she heard his voice, everything she did and the child died. 
Never go near these people who deal with spirits, he said, by all the great people of the world. But we are not bothered. You see, what's wrong? We go to spirits, to ESPs, to <coughs> our elders who are dead, to our brothers and sisters. Why bother them? Now they are dead. Let them be free. As it is, you tortured their lives when they lived on this earth. Now <laughs> why don't you leave them free? Let them go and take their births. But we are not satisfied. We say, no, we must talk to them. We have planchets, we hold hands, call spirits and do with them. But do you know what happens with them? First of all, no realization. Very difficult for such people. Even if you get rid of friction and all that, you have lots of problems. I have seen people go mad with it. Because these spirits are dirty things. Supposing you, you have called me, I am an Indian, so now you are exposed to India. You must know you are exposed to India and you have no control over the people who are coming down from the, these areas and you are just encouraged. They possess you. They possess you, your family, everything. And it's a fact that these horrible things that act or that call or that try to show that they are helping you are the people who are just taking money from you, but they are going to be condemned much worse than anyone. The people who are mediums, who are clairvoyant, they use these things and all this, we'll call these uh, gurus from Tibet, there's nothing like that. Anybody who is a realized soul will never do that. Any realized soul will never come into any body. No guru can come into any body, take it from me, because they know the value of freedom. They will never do it, it's a very mean thing to do. To them who are dead and to yourself who is living and is such a beautiful thing created by God. You get possessed by all these nonsensical things, black magic and this still a smart. And I don't know how you educated people can take to it. Perhaps you are very naive. I would say that you are naive, because in India we know this. We know all this. We know all this uh, materialization and all business. We know very well. Of course, I mean, the young people do not know now, because I am an ancient person. I, we all knew about it. We call it Bhanumati. We call it Preta uh, Vidya, Smashana Vidya, Bhuta Vidya, and there are books and books about it, what these things are done. They black magic and voodoo and all sorts of things that you call it. But you have no knowledge about it. Now, for example, we put all our dead bodies in the church. This is very dangerous. I don't know who told, where is it written in the Bible? I don't understand why should you put your dead bodies in the church. All right, if you want to have a church for the dead body, let them be alone with the dead bodies. You are living people. Why do you sit on top of dead bodies there and have all the boot, these devils coming on you and sitting on your heads? Only a realized soul is the person who should be buried in a church. Only a realized soul. In India is a custom that all people are burnt except for a realized soul. Because they never try to possess anyone. They never try to disturb. On the contrary, they help in so many ways. They are not the people who will just come to disturb your life or to give you some encouragement. Sometimes you feel very happy also with that, because you're, you feel that your, uh, um, you can say, your responsibility is taken over. They have taken your responsibility and you feel quite relieved. In the beginning you feel quite nice. It's a good sensation. Oh, I feel peace within me. Because somebody else has come into your house and he's going to use all your house and you'll be left behind. And then you become a recluse. Such people will find they'll put the cloth in the mouth like this, look like that, and they're very much frightened and afraid. Of course, before me they shake like this. All sorts of things happen. Now there's another trend about it. If you say that these are possessed people and this and that, so the left side ones are even worse. Left side ones are the people who go into the spirit business very much, but there are two types of spirit business. One can give supraconscious and one can give even subconscious. And subconscious is very easily available because they are busy bodies, all these spirits on the subconscious area, they are busy bodies and very mean and sly and dirty people. For example, a woman dies young without marriage. She will, she would like to trouble a married woman. She's jealous. And that's why there are certain rules and regulations in our life one should understand by which you should avoid all this nonsense. Take your psychology itself, right? psychologists do not know what they are facing. They treat mad people. I told you about Freud. He was half fake because he only knew about this desire, power of desire, which he called conditioning and all that. 
But he did not know there was another one. This is our ego. So he said, you take out all your conditioning. You don't have any conditioning whatsoever. So where do you go? You land up in what's wrong? Ego-oriented. Then you form another cult by saying, we must destroy our cult. You go on saying to yourself, oh, you are good for nothing, you are useless all the time, kill your ego. So you become a recluse. These two things happen with the extremes of this movement, of this center to this center, you either go to the left or to the right. Now what is the real thing? This is the center of creativity. Creativity and the knowledge of the Divine. Knowledge of the Divine is when you get your Realization, you get these cool vibrations <coughs> of the Holy Ghost. And you have to know how to raise the Kundalini of others, and you have to know how to correct yourself, you have to know how to know all these centers, and also you have to find out all the absolute questions you have got within your mind. This has to happen to you. This realization has to happen because this is in your own right you are having. Now you are a human being and you have to become a superhuman being. I am not doing anything about it. I, as I say, I am just cashing your bank accounts. But if bank accounts are so much on the left or the right, it's rather difficult. You have to give lots of grace marks and sort of over drafts are there. <laughs> so one has to understand that better be in the center, not to go to these things. Why? Why? For what? What are you going to gain out of these things? Are you going to go, go to your spirit? Are you going to become yourself? Why? For just for a little gain here and a little gain there. Why are you going to these horrid people? They will take you to such a horrible extreme that maybe you may not be able to return. In London I was surprised there was a doctor <coughs> whom I knew by relationship and he came to see me and he said, I've lost all my jobs, everything, because I'm very depressed, I can't work, I don't know what happens to me, I'm extremely depressed, I've lost zest to work, I do not feel anything, I'm just gone, case. I'm very depressed. <coughs> and every time I try to work I get again depressed, I'm very tired. <coughs> I asked him, did he go to any one of these tantrikas and these type of places? He said, never. But my grandfather was a tantrik. He used to do this black magic business and now see the grandson is suffering because of that. Later on he was cured. We have one Australian here who was a Russian doctor. His grandmother had a habit of taking the child to the cemetery in the early ages of his life. He remembers that very well. And after some time he became so depressed, he lost his job, I mean he couldn't work, he used to get a headache and all sorts of things used to happen. And cramps used to come in his hands. When he came to me, he got cured, but it took some time because in childhood all the impressions of these spirits was there. So one has to understand how to keep dead away from you. You have to be in the present and not in the dead. Whosoever is dead is finished. You, have you ever noticed a monkey, uh, if the child of a monkey dies, before the death, the monkey will be shouting and screaming and doing all kinds of things. As soon as the thing dies, it leaves it. It's not bothered. You can see with dogs and so many things, it's not bothered about it, it knows it's gone. That's why it is said that when somebody is dead, think of God and you sing songs and things like that and do not indulge into it too much. But we have forgotten all those things and the way we do about dead things sometimes, it is so far that actually most of us live, then when doing all this, we live in the past world. We live in the past and such people also see some ghosts and things and some of them who were like this have seen my past and have been shaking before. They all shake before me, just like this, they go on shaking. They cannot sit straight, they go on shaking like this, they go on shaking like this. All the time their body shaking, they have no control over their body. So one has to understand that these things are absolutely dangerous for human beings. We are human beings, we are not dead bodies, we are not that. But the worst thing is that those who indulge into these things are caught up by the proteins which doctors have said are nothing but these dead spirits. They are saying proteins because they don't understand. These are the dead spirits. Cancer is caused only by the attack of the dead spirits. I have not come across a single case whom I am treated, I am treated many, who has not got the affectation of the spirit. 
Now, in realization, when you get your realization, you catch up on this or this. These are the two Swadish Tara, which is the one. <coughs> Now, when you put your hands like this, you will get your realization as well. When I drop it, just like this. And you hold the feet straight on the ground. Excuse me. Could you please turn up the topic of this? This step is quite low. What's I don't it? know if other people find it right here. Yeah. Could we turn up the podium for somebody at the back? I'm sorry for that. I've been talking in the theaters too. It's better now? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for that. You should have told me, aren't you? You were so silent, I didn't know. Now, is it all right? Yeah. Now, I was telling you that when you put your hands like this, First, the cool breeze starts moving, right? But when you have got your realization, and you put your hand on somebody to test it, you catch on this one, that means it is unauthorized. Unauthorized working of the demand. Can be subconscious areas, can be supraconscious, can be psychologist or anyone can catch on this. When you work on your mind, the mind is the one that is the super ego there, the blue one, is the mind. And when you have somehow or other gone to some person or have had something to do with blood and it yourself, then you catch on this. It's left Swadishana we call it. And when you watch on this, you have to say that you believe in the divine working, in the pure working of the divine. And that's called as Nirmalami. Nirmalami means pure. The pure knowledge of the technique, how to raise your body. When you say that, this gets all right and the spirits sleep. There are many people who have come to me who are <coughs> mad. Now they say, how by Kundalini you cure back people? What do you do about it? Now, I just give them Kundalini awakening. <coughs> Then when the Kundalini awakens, when she goes to this center, which is the second center within us, The enlightenment takes place, the deity there of creativity gets awakened. And with the light, this darkness within you just disappears. Just goes. Epilepsy can be cured. If somebody is suffering, suffering from epilepsy, <coughs> there's a very simple method of curing that person. Extremely simple. When you come next, I will tell you how to get such a person cured. It's very simple. Sahaja Yoga is a spontaneous living method by which you can cure people as a byproduct of Kundalini Abhin. It's not that I'm here as a healer and I'm going about giving 10, what you call, dollars uh, for healing sometimes. It's just when Kundalini gets awakened, you get cured. You get a good health. Because the Kundalini passes through this center which is responsible for your physical side. If your physical side is all right, then your health is all right. But there are other things with you emotional side, there is also you have got your mental side and also you have got above all is the spiritual. All these things are to be enlightened through human theory. The first thing that happens to you that your health falls. No doubt. All kinds of things like paralysis, cancer, <coughs> diabetes. Diabetes is curable by Sahaja. This I must explain to you how diabetes <coughs> Diabetes is caused by people who think too much again, who think too much. So this, the center has to work very hard and it cannot give sufficient attention to the pancreas, which is on the left hand side. Because of that, the left side, left hand side becomes frozen and the right hand side is working very hard. Now how do you cure your diabetes? Only way is if you have a realized soul, you give vibrations to the pancreas and give a balance to a person. You, there's a way of balancing it. If you can balance a thing, people get rid of their diabetes permanently. Mm -hmm. Arthritis also can be cured. But now I must tell you about the spleen, which is a very important thing in us, and I think every one of you must understand it in full way. <coughs> Spleen, we do not know how important it is within us. It is the speedometer. It looks after the speed we have. The way we are speeding these days, we move really telescopically. We, we talk telescopically. We walk telescopically. 
when we are very speedy and the speediness comes to us when our spleen has gone crazy. How does the spleen go crazy? It's very simple. <coughs> now spleen is there to create new blood corpuscles, red blood corpuscles, to meet all the emergencies you go through. For example, you are eating your food and you, if it's an emergency, you need more the RBCs, red blood corpuscles, so this spleen starts emitting more red blood corpuscles. But at the same time, you can have the 9 o'clock news, and you hear something horrible, another emergency is created. Then suddenly you eat your food and run. Third emergency is created. Poor spleen gets absolutely crazy. It does not know when to produce what blood cells. It, does, it doesn't know what to do with you, because you, suddenly you have three, four things together. You'll be having your breakfast, putting one foot on the car, you're having your breakfast, talking to somebody that side, here somebody just saying, get in, get in, and all is going on simultaneously, poor this spleen doesn't know which way to move. So it becomes crazy. And then the attack comes somehow. And blood cancer is set. Blood cancer is the result of speediness. So one has to be very careful that our spleen must be alright. I'm warning you as a mother. I know these problems, we have pure blood cancer, but it's a horrible <coughs> disease and once it gets over, within one week they say it finishes. Now we have cured many patients of blood cancer which were declared to be dead after eight days. You see that's all, they give a certificate, after eight days or after one month. That's the certificate you get in the hospital, you will die. But in Sahajoga, when they try, cure them, they have been cured, and when they went to the doctors, oh, they said, I know it was really remarkable, but we can't believe it was such. Even if a doctor is cured, they say, oh, this doctor has gone mad. He's talking like this. How can he? Here they have certified the person is going to die within eight days, and there he's cured and going strong after two years or so. They say there must be something. They do not want to accept because this challenges their knowledge, but I'm not here to take away their profession. They can have lots of patients. I'm not here to cure them. It's just the seekers who come to me for realization are blessed by divine grace and they get bring, they get cured because they're seekers. They are the men of God. And they have to become the prophets when they become the prophets. In this era, they have to convert others in the same way and they will make them prophets. It's said by William Blake about 100 years back. He has described all these things in his book, Milton will be surprised. <coughs> he has gone to such a limit of prophecy that he was such a seer that he has even described where I lived, Surrey Hills. The first beacons we built in Surrey Hills. And also, he has said where our ashram is going to be in the ruins because we had no money, so they purchased a ruined place. In the ruins, the foundation will be laid in Lambeth Way, and there it is. It says, come to Lambeth Way, and here is the, her, her loo vibrates the city of Lamb. And Lambeth Way, and Lambeth Way, and he says, this is going to become the Jerusalem. Just imagine, a person hundred years back could see that he was such a seer, and he has written all about it. But human beings are not sensitive to things. I went to see his exhibition, he was a great artist. I was amazed, they were just seeing how he has shown new women in the head. Just imagine. You went there to see this. I mean, this is like you went to see a flower show and then you are picking up all the filth and dirt. This is the way you look at beautiful things, see for beauty and think of beauty. And then you are beauty. Why should you desire is a big things in life? Why should you not desire something that's so beautiful? That is your spirit. This is the second center I have told you. This is the one which limits, which limits our religion in the sense of our sustenance, not the religion the way you understand. Because all these religions are just like flowers. On one living tree have been plucked by people, and they say, This is mine, this is mine, this is mine. And they have made these flowers very ugly. Flowers are decaying. The whole attention should be on becoming the spirit. If it is not, the rest of it is not God's work. God's work is just to awaken your Kundalini. It's the living 
God. Because if he is the living God, he has to do the living. His work is to transform a little flower into fruit which you cannot do. In the same way, you cannot consent the Kundalini. But if you consent, when you come to Sahaja Yoga, you will see with your naked eyes the pulsation rising over here, and you can see your baptism taking place. It is written by so many people. They have said, like Kabir Das has clearly said, we have a great poet called Kabir Dasa who has described Sun Yoga about uh, three, four hundred years back. And we had Akisha Karacharya who has very clearly said all these things that I am telling you. But this was a knowledge limited to few people. Even Krishna talked to one Arjuna, Christ talked to some multitudes, and they crucified him. Because they couldn't understand what he was talking, what was they crucifying? They did not understand. Moses, how many people recognized him? Abraham, how many people recognized him? They were never recognized, never understood. That was the problem. And this is what one has to understand. That the time, this is done, this is done. The time has come now to recognize, to understand. To recognize yourself that you are the spirit. Not this body, not this mind, not this ego. <coughs> but you are the spirit and not the goose, so forth. The one who does not give you the spiritual realization is not you. It's not you. You must understand. This is the thing of who? The primordial master who tells you to be the center, who tells you all the things that are to be done in the name of religion. In the name of religion, everyone has said the same thing. Now, I don't say anything like that because I know how to handle the situation. We had a doctor in London who was an alcoholic to me, he got his realization, and he, next day he gave up. He just didn't want to have it. He said, no, I'm enjoying myself. I'm not bored. I don't even know what. But he went to Germany, and he said that after two, th two three months, he said, I used to like one wine. Let me try how it is. So when he had that one, when he had it, he felt like vomiting. Absolutely. He said it was smelling like a car put in the water. He never smelled that way before. And he just felt like vomiting. He was very nauseating. He just gave it up. What happens really is that when you get your awakening, your religion is enlightened within you. Then I don't have to tell you, don't steal, don't talk daily, don't do this. <coughs> like my own daughter uh, has a granddaughter. I mean, I have a granddaughter who is a realized soul, two children, two granddaughters are realized souls. And one of them came, made her, but she said, uh, Grandmother, did you have to read this stupid thing called as modern science? Foolish, isn't it? They tell us don't not tell lies, don't steal. Are we servants? Why should we tell lies? Why should they tell us all these things? I don't like. So the little one says, Oh, there are stupid people. How can they say like this? Why should we do it? There's no temptation. We don't have to say we just have no temptation. You are awake. You are you are thermizing. You're sustaining us. Like we are human beings. If you have passed through a dirty lane, then we cannot. We close our noses, we feel the smell of the dirt and the filth. But you take a horse, he <coughs> can follow me, he walks very nicely. He's not bad, he doesn't make a smell. In the same way, your awareness can seem like Then, what you mean sinful, you don't like it. You just don't like it. Whatever takes you away from spirit, you don't like it. Because you lose your vibrations. Lose your vibrations. Now, another center is also very important, which is for our well being. Or as Navi Chakra, what which I'll tell you next time, because already I have told you quite elaborately. Moreover, I would like to have questions from you today also. But like last time, don't go on asking questions and the same person ask. One person should ask only one question and a sensible question. Because your seekers don't waste your time and don't waste time of others. <coughs> Why to worry? You have reincarnated many attacks. No doubt about it. 
But now this is the point. At this point, where are you? There's no need to have reincarnations. Who is going to count? From Amiba to this stage, how many times you incarnated, what are you Okay. At this time, you have to have your spirit enlightened. Alright? Forget about the past. Just forget it. And then we start thinking, especially in India, they'll ask me, was I a king? Was I this? Was I that? I said, I'm not bothered about the history. Uh, there was a boy, uh, very scholarly, he came and asked me, Mother, was I Napoleon last life? I said, why? He said, even if I was, don't tell me, otherwise I'll jump in the sea. <laughs> I said, no, why? Well, what makes you think that? He said, because I'm very ego-oriented, my ego is called low self. And another point is I'm very good at drawings. So I think these two combinations are only possible in Napoleon. <laughs> I said, no, no, you are not Napoleon, don't you worry. He said, otherwise I'll jump in the sea and take another incarnation. <laughs> so, don't worry about these things, all right? It can be quite deviating. <coughs> there is a big uh, show going on everywhere. What was my last time somebody said you were in Egypt? So, what does it matter? Whether you were Egypt or Timbuktu, what does it matter? You see, this is a big uh, story going on, people pay money, now tell me what is... And they are telling also very nicely about this. You must ask the person, what was you last time? Must I have been a donkey? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, why are you taking money for this? <coughs> what do you think of Sir Arthur Adlon, the serpent cow? Have you read it? Have you read Sir Arthur huh. Adlon, the serpent cow? I've read it, Baba. I don't know what to say. I don't know how he wrote. I mean, there's no honesty about it. There are so many books, I have seen such a big books I was surprised how could he write such books without knowing anything. Anything which is so confused, contradictory, all that. But how could I, I always had a great admiration for Western people that they were honest. Whether they did wrong or they were thieves or anything, they were honest about it. But this one, I don't know from where did he get such courage to write about Kundalini without knowing a word about it. Horrible. Absolutely. All these books, so many like this Gopi Prashant book I read, it's like a uh, person coming from a village and putting his hands into the blood and saying that I want a shop. He doesn't know anything, they're so naive, not only naive, but in his case I think he's not entitled, he is not suitable. You have to be a very holy person to do that. You have to be compassionate, you have to be love, you have to be pure. <coughs> it's all money-making propositions I think. Write about Kundalini because it is unknown. <coughs> it's just money making propositions. Everything is a money making proposition these days. In the name of God, in the name of religion, in the name of Kundalini, in the name of all that is holy because there is no authority that will catch you. And poor people who are seekers, who are true seekers, who are innocent, who are simple, are caught by that. <coughs> if you have read too many books, I'll have a problem with you. I must tell you. First of all, you have to throw all these books in the sea. Because all the books are in your head and you are lost. Your self is lost. I really tell you, it's very true. This one is in here with the same thing. He gave me such a bad time for some time. And he was shaky and he had all sorts of things happening to him when he first came to me. And he had read all the books from A to Z, from this side to this side, and this side to this side. There's no book which he left. I said, now at least leave one book for me to read. <laughs> Is there a difference between the awakening and the realization? Yes, there is a difference between awakening and realization. It's true. It awakens, it passes, you can see it. Many people, when there's obstruction, you can see it. It passes through various chakras, you can see. In some people, it is so slow moving. Otherwise, it takes just a split of a second. But if there is obstruction, you can see it. And the awakening has taken place. But the breaking of the sastrana is the realization where you get cool breeze in the hand. If you don't get cool breeze in the hand, at least you must get cool breeze here. Meaning, sometimes this center is very bad in many people. Then you don't feel it in the hand, but you must feel it here. But still, it's just the beginning. Just determination, like Christ has said, that some things fell on here and some things fell there. It happens like that. So, awakening is not the end of it, it's just the beginning. 
it has started. And then realization is established. First, when the Kundalini goes over this chakra, you get a state called thoughtless awareness. When there's no thought in your mind, it's very easy to get. This is the center of Christ. It goes about that. When it passes through all these centers of Moses and Abraham and all that, it passes through the center of Christ and it passes through this Brahma <coughs> Ramana Kundalini mode. When you get your baptism, then you feel the full breeze in that. But it may be sucked back into the places where there's a problem. Because with me, I see people get it just like that. It flows like a great river in flood. It happens. But then sometimes it comes back. But once it is awakened, it is awakened. We have to learn how to establish it. It's a very good question, my child. We have to learn. Yeah. Um, there's one school of thought um, regarding enlightenment that advocates. <coughs> It doesn't advocate, it says that enlightenment can be a static process. This is what you've described as a dynamic process. The school of thought describes enlightenment as a static process. What you've described is a dynamic process. Yes, it is not static. How can that be? It's a living process. You see, you become connected to you become that. You see, you become really dynamic. Because your awareness has a new dimension, you become connected to consciousness. You start feeling another personality. You start feeling yourself. You start getting the power of the place. You don't know how many powers you get. It's like this, that you have, say, a big, huge uh, test. Now, if I say there's music here, song here, drama here, it's a bit. We can't see anything. You bring a television and put it to the base. You see the mirror. That's what you are. You are really dynamic in it. Dynamic is not, but there's no word to describe how you are made. It's so beautifully done. Once you are put to the main soil, your power, power starts going. There's no end to it. It's so miraculous, so wonderful. I wish you could see one of my photographs that they have taken, which you will not be able to explain. I think next time I'll bring it along. It's, you become so dynamic. A, a person, if you have seen my book, I do it. It's a person, a very ordinary person. He was a gardener. He got his realization. And he had never had a camera. But he did not know how to handle the camera. He once took the camera and took my photograph. And that is such a wonderful photograph he has taken. And since then he discovered he can take photographs very well, he can paint very well, he can sing very well. And you become really so dynamic and inexhaustible. Oh, oh, But still, human beings as they are, they are get caught up with the ego, caught up with the super ego, so you must know how to get rid of it. And I must say, Mohammed Sahib is the one who has told us lots of things, lots of secrets, how to get rid of these things. They are all have added to the knowledge of Sahaja Yoga, to such an extent that really we should have gratitude for all of them. saying before about the thumb. Death, or say, towards death, 
or thinking of death, all these things. Like I've seen people from Sweden, young people, they all have none fears. When I felt them, I said, what are you doing? Young people. They said, we are planning how to commit suicide. This is the result of their fears. Just Young people from 70 to 21 are just planning how to commit suicide. And there's a competition between the Swiss and the Swedish. <laughs> so, and these days, Swiss are high. Now, the, this finger, this finger, this uh, thumb, is responsible for this set. If you have a problem in your liver, you feel this. Plus this. Nothing. This is it. You can see that. Now, I think you have got the book, please buy the book from these people, which is, of course, is at a very nominal price, but a man for printing, and go through it and see for yourself what it is. <coughs> All right? How come, after so many prophets, after so many years of history, and also of civilization's prehistory, that they write in such prose, in such poetry, that the truth is so obscure that it's hard to understand and hasn't really come through in force? Well, after so many prophets that have been writing so much, why is it that it's all been so hidden and the truth is really has been very difficult to see? Uh, you see, sir, it is very difficult. Human beings are really, I don't know what to call them, because they never understand. You know? What Christ, they didn't allow me to live for four years. I mean, what to do? Abraham, Moses, you know what they did to them. All the prophets, what you did to them. We have so many good gurus in India, and in Ramun I know one, very good one, and also in England I know one, but they are hiding. They don't want to fix you. I've told them, I asked one, one of them to go to America with big coaxing, everything, I paid his money, I said, please go and work because I cannot do it. Within three days, he ran away from New York and came back and said, Mother, I can't do this place. They do not want, they do not want their spirit. They want other things. They want money, they want this, they want that. You see, they have, they have never understood before, they have never looked at my spirit. That's why Christ has said one thing, that I will forgive you anything that you have done against me, but against the Holy Ghost, nothing will be forgiven. Because you will know what is the Holy Ghost is. Recognition is the most difficult thing for the ego. You see, there was a lady today, she said, why should you do it? I said, I'd be very happy if you marry me. Imagine I'm a happy married woman, I've got my children and grandchildren. If somebody could do it, I'd be very happy. Why don't you do it? Why do you feel your ego challenged? You better do it. I don't know anything. Many things I don't know. Like, I can drive, I cannot drive, I cannot do many things, but I don't feel bad about it. Now I know this job. Uh, if I'm doing it free, what's the harm? Now, if you can do it, I'll be very happy to return. She said, I don't know. Then I said, let me do it. They feel bad, you know, that I have it. But you can do it yourself, but first of all, they didn't like it. If the mother knows how to cook, let her cook. It's a terrible job. Every night you sleep at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, at about 4 o'clock, work like a, I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end you find people challenging you, why should you do it? Oh, there are all kinds of people in England. Somebody asked me, why don't you remove the poverty of India? I said, I said, no, I'm not here to remove poverty or anything. I'm here to give self-realization. I said, but I'm sorry, why do you ask such a question to me? Because who is responsible for our poverty in India? Who is? I shouldn't say that. I'm sitting here in England on your soil. Who is responsible for the poverty of India? Such a question you are asking me, you please answer. 300 years they moved us. And now he's teaching me that I should go and the poverty of India. Just think of it. The second question comes up. Great government man, you see. He says that, what about your population problem? Why don't you solve it? I said, I'm sorry, you are also responsible for that. I said, how? How do we increase your population? I said, you do. I said, how? I said, very simple. In this country of yours, this great country of yours, every week two children are killed by the parents. Legitimate children are killed by the parents. Now, which fool will be like, would like to take part in this country of yours? We have to bear the loss because you don't have good parents, good mothers. Mothers are becoming liberated. Husbands are becoming abandoned. Now, who, who would like to 
take one and you are having minus growth. So who should bear the growth? Because last year's winter has started, people are taking their part. We have to bear the growth in India and you are blaming us for over overpopulation. What should they do? <laughs> it's a fact. I think it's a fact. If you don't have good families, if you don't have love, you don't have good homes, why should children be born to you? You can be born to a family where the father is a drunkard and mother is a, um, what do you call that? Liberated? <laughs> such people produce children, I don't understand. They don't. In Germany, they pay so much for a woman to produce a child, but they don't want to produce. They are funny ideas. And in India, if a woman doesn't get a child, she goes to all the social places, to all the sites, and she do everything to get a child. See the difference. So who is responsible for our overpopulation? You please tell me. So, prophets are not responsible, the human beings. They do discipline. To me also, I don't know how many of you are really going to settle down. But I'll see to it. I'm quite sure. <laughs> I've learned lots of things in my last class, and I'm quite an expert to say. Yes? Okay, then virus is another kind of a position. There are many things. 
You cannot blame God for that. I know you are worrying so right, but you do not know who was in the house, how it happened. Can I say? Is it can be some sort of a thing, all right? If you tell me the whole case, privately I will tell you what was the case, all right? chakras uh, are damaged by accident if you have a, a severe accident of some sort and a spinal injury takes place. Uh, can the lightning still take place? It has a problem if it is damaged, but still I have seen it Sahaja Yoga. We have people who had poor spastic and who had forget back bones, who had broken back bones, they became straight and they started. Yesterday only we had a case like that. There was a gentleman who used to use a stick when he walked from childhood, he was limping, he could not walk without a support. Now he walks without a support, he doesn't drag his leg, he can stand on his leg. So it can happen still. So even if it is damaged, you should worry. We have to work it out, all right? Krishna has said, Karmani Vadi Karaste Parishu Means we have to do the job, we have to work it out. Don't worry about the fruits. That's my attitude, please. If I do not do it, you are not going to hit me hard at all. If I cannot do it, I just cannot do it. I'm not here selling anything, nor have I taken anything from you. I try and try and try. That's what I can say. <coughs> all right? It's quite fair. Huh. What is it? Do you use a different healing process for different illnesses? Or is it the same process? Do you use a different healing process for different illnesses? Or is it the same process? No, Kundalini awakening is the basic thing, alright? But it passes through various chakras. And how to awaken various chakras and deities, we have to tell you how to do it. And that's what you have to learn. And certain things like vibrated water and vibrated things are given to you to eat. For example, liver, people should eat sugar. Sugar, which is sugar cane sugar, and that is vibrated. Then the diabetes people have to eat salt, which is vibrated. Some things like that also help to expedite. So there are some few things like that, very simple and very cheap. Uh, once I asked a lady uh, that you bring one kilo of sugar, and she was surprised that she thought I was going to take from her the sugar and may open a market of sugar. <laughs> So you have to vibrate the sugar, and when you take the sugar home, you can eat it. That's it. It's very simple. We will tell you all very, very simple methods. I would request you to keep the Sunday free. I will definitely make myself available for you, and I will tell you how to raise the Kundalini, and how to give realization, and how to heal people. But we are not healers here. We are real life souls. What wrong did she 
do as opposed to No, she, she may not have anything in it now, but I will tell you what, you know, uh, what is the matter, but in private. But I'll tell you what happens, how the accidents take place. Accident takes place because there are some spirits who are trying to disturb. They are there, the negative people are there. Not necessarily fit your brain any wrong. There's a big fight going on between the divine and the negative. And they'll always try to harm a seeker. From the very childhood, a seeker is attacked. The better he is attacked more. It's very common, I've seen it. But I'm here to cure him. I know it happens. It's very bad. But they are doing it. And they do it all the time. They're just waiting. Even when you get your realization, when you go out, they'll catch you. And they'll put ideas into your head. They do all kinds of things. So not this is one idea you should take out from your mind that if there is any pain or any trouble, it is because of your wrong or any mistakes. It can be the negative forces which are acting on you, which are working it up. Even on the road you will find one spot, you will always find an accident. But if you are a realized soul, if you even meet an accident, then you do not get into trouble and nobody gets. If you are in the car or in the bus or even in the tree. Is an experience of many people. You are always saved. This is the difference. Because all the angels look after you. Why do negative forces want to harm people? I mean, I can't understand why they want to do You better go and ask them. <laughs> well, I would if you could, but I don't understand. You see, they're, they, they, they're sadist. They enjoy hurting others. They're sadist. They like to destroy. They are destroying forces which are at play. They are all trying to destroy us in many ways. We have to be conscious of them and understand. They are very subtle and they are very attractive. We do not know. Now the destruction is not going to come from outside. It is going to come from within. <coughs> One has to understand all these things through Sahaja Yoga. When you have light, we start seeing them, how they act and how they work it out. Protect themselves from that. How should, you, how should they protect themselves from this? Yes, that is very important, and that's why I'm saying you must come where he's saying will teach you everything. So many things are to be taught, isn't it? How to protect? That's very important. Very important. You are to be protected. No doubt. Now, it's over. I think we have had enough of it. Let's have the good day anyway. All right. Just you have to take out your shoes uh, because you see my that also helps us.